Hi there, on this screencast I'm going to go over the sample uh, quiz questions for uh, the data analysis quiz. Alright, so uh, for uh, the first thing we have the following data, what are the mean, median, and mode? So the mean is going to just be the average of all of those values. So if I add them up, I get 15, 39, 48, 57, 67, I get 72, and then I would divide that by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Divided by 9, I get a mean of 8, uh, point zero. The median is going to be the, the value that occurs the most often, so that would be the mean. Uh, the median is going to be 8. The mode, is, I'm sorry, not that's the mode the mode is the one that occurs the most often so that would be eight and then the median is going to be the one in the middle so i'm going to do count from the top and the bottom into the middle so one two three four five so uh the median is going to be eight um, as well and I didn't put it, but uh, if you were asked for the range, the range is going to be the difference between the high and the low values. So the range is going to be 11. Okay, what are the relative frequencies? So the relative frequencies uh, are just the percent of the data that that number it represents. So it's, it's sort of like a pie chart, and you're trying to figure out uh, for each data value, what percent of the pie it is. So four, well, there's nine pieces of data. Four occurs one time. So four would be one-ninth, or I think that's approximately 0.11. Five occurs one time, so it would also be one-ninth. Six occurs one time, so it would be one-ninth. Eight occurs three times, so it would be three-ninths, or one third, nine occurs twice, it's going to be two ninths, and 15 occurs once, it's going to be one ninth. So one thing to know about the relative frequency is that all of the relative frequencies should add up to one. And if you do add these up, uh, I believe you do get one. Uh, so, uh, all right, so what are the percentiles for each data value as a percent round to the, to the uh, nearest, um, whole, uh, nearest whole number? Uh, so the percentiles are essentially the relative frequency for that piece of data plus the relative frequencies of all the pieces of data that are less than that piece of data. So that means for 4, it's the smallest, so there are no relative frequencies less than it. So it would be uh, 1 ninth, because that's its relative frequency, uh, which is 0 0.11, which is 11%. Then 5 is going to be 1 ninth plus 1 ninth, which is 2 ninths, uh, 0.22, or approximately 33%. Uh, 6 is 1 ninth plus 1 ninth plus 1 ninth, which is 1 third, which is approximately 33%, plus I add up all the relative frequencies of the ones above it, uh, so that gives me 0.33 or uh, 0.66 or 66%. So 6 is going to take you up to uh, 70, let's see, I'm sorry, 6 is just, what am I saying, I was doing 6 right here, 5 is going to be 1 ninth plus 1 ninth or 2 ninths, yeah, which is up to 33%, 6 is going to be uh, a, another, Sorry, this should be 22%. It's 1 ninth plus 1 ninth. 6 is going to be 1 ninth plus 1 ninth plus 1 ninth, which is going to give you 33%. Uh, 
um, then 8 is going to be 1 ninth, 1 ninth, 1 ninth plus 1 third, which is going to give you 66%. Then 9 is going to be get take you up to uh, 88%. And then 15 is finally going to take you up to 100%. It, when you round up to the nearest whole number. Uh, what is the variance of the data rounded to the nearest percent? Okay, so we said the mean was 8. So the variance is going to be the difference between 8 and the number. That, or I'm sorry, the number, the difference between the number, each data value, and the mean. Then you're going to square that. Then you're going to find the average of all of those values. So... It's going to be the average of 4 minus 8 squared plus 5 minus 8 squared plus 6 minus 8 squared. Now, if a data value occurs more than one time, you have to throw it in there for as many times as it occurs. So that means 6 goes in there. No. 8 goes in there three times. And nine goes in there one, twice. And 15, 15, nine goes in there twice and 15 goes in there once. So that gives me, um, if I add up all these values, that gives me 16 uh, plus 9 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. No. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. 6 only occurs once. And 8 occurs three times. Can you tell that I'm rushing? Because I keep making dumb mistakes. So 16, 9, 4, 0, 0, 0, 1 plus 1 plus 49. And then I'm going to take the average of all those values. So there are nine values. So I get 16, uh, 25, 29, 30, 31, uh, 49, that gives me 80, and then the average of that I would divide by 9, and that's going to give me, let's see, 80 divided by 9, which is going to be 8 point something. So let's see, can I do it right here? Let me bring up my calculator. I get 80 divided by 9, which is 8.88. So that's the variance. Uh, rounded to the nearest tenth, it would be 8.9. Okay, the standard deviation uh, is simply the square root of the variance. So the square root of 8.9 uh, is going to be uh, 2.98. So that's rounded to the nearest tenth is going to be 3.0. So if the data set has a mean of 55 and a standard deviation of 14, what is the z-score of um, uh, 27? So the z-score is going to be the data value minus the mean over the standard deviation. And I'll just put SD. So that would be um, 27 minus 55 all over 14. So 27 minus 55 is 28 over 14. That gives you 2. So it has a z-score of 2.0. Um, if the data is distributed normally, what would you... Ex I'm sorry, negative 2.0. Uh, what would percent of the data would you expect to be at or below the value of 20, 25. 
Okay, so 25 as a z-score, so I would need to find the z-score, and then I need to look up the z-score in the chart, because I'm below the mean, and I'm down here at 25. Uh, if I know the z-score, I can find the percent of the data that is less than uh, 25. So you can kind of think of that as the area under the normal curve. Okay, so... Uh, my z-score is going to be 25 minus 55 all over 14. So that's going to give me negative 30 divided by 14. So I'm going to do negative 30 divided by 14 to find the z-score. Uh, which is the same thing as... Hang on. Uh... equals and then divided by 14. So I get negative 1.14 is the z-score. Okay, and then I go to the website and I type in negative 1.14 so let me bring up the keyboard. So I go to numbers and I do negative 1.14. See, did it type it? No, it didn't. So let me try that again. Negative. 1.14. You want to make sure you do once the one-sided option. So that means 25.4% uh, would be the answer. That's the percent of the of the data that would be less than it. So 25.4%. And then, uh, so what data value would you expect to have a Z value of 1.5? What percent of the data would have it higher than 1.5? So now I'm going to use the Z-score formula, and I'm going to solve for uh, the data value. So it's going to be data value minus mean over standard deviation. So the mean was, uh, what was it, 20, uh, I think I could remember it, Tw 27, and the standard deviation was 14. So if I solve for the data value, I end up with 14 times uh, 1.5 plus 27. So 14 times 1.5 plus 27 is... ...48. So that would be... Um, my uh, the value that I would expect and then if I put that z-score into the z-score calculator so I'm gonna put it right in there uh, 1.5 so that's gonna give me uh, for let's see no I want one-sided So that means 6.68% above and 93.3% below. So I'd round up to 6.7% because it's asking for how much is with a z-score higher than 1.5. So only 6.7%. 
And that's because with normally distributed data, most of the data is between one negative one and one standard deviation above or below the mean. Okay, um, I think that's it. And then maybe I, do, oh yeah, what is the shape of data distributed normally? Uh, bell curve. There. So that's my screencast. And um, we'll see uh, next time. Hopefully I'll manage to get it done earlier. Um, so uh, we will uh, catch you later. Cheers.